All right, let's start with this millimeter wave tech. All right, so I'm excited about this. You know how I am, Moose. I'm probably the biggest advocate of millimeter wave that I know. You're a little bit more reserved and conservative on the technology, and that's perfectly right. fine. Here is a technology development and innovation that is likely going to help my case in encouraging the innovation and is kind of might get you to kind of maybe see it a little bit differently if the performance was to improve. So here it is. Millimeter wave is about to get better. There is a new antenna technology and technique of placement in which manufacturers are considering putting millimeter wave antenna hardware under the display. Before I even get to talking about the details, Moose, does that do anything for you? Knowing that I know you're not that big on millimeter wave, I am, but does it do anything for you? Me personally, this is what this is what it means to me, okay? As an electrical engineer, okay? If the antenna is going to be underneath something, then it ha there is going to be some impedance, okay? Impedance in the sense that um, there's something in the way of the actual receiver, okay? Is it going to improve uh, if, if it's the entire display? Maybe, right? A bigger antenna means generally you're going to get better speeds, uh, better re reception, right? Better signal strength. Uh, but signal-to-noise ratio, definitely a concern. Uh, we don't know, Sneed. It's, it's highly questionable. All right, Moose. So here's the approach. Because you didn't have any of the details, right? So you had no idea. All right, so here's right. their process. They want to go antenna on display. There's a Korean firm that is working on this technology that is going to create transparent antennas which in theory should boost the connectivity resilience of the millimeter wave signal. So it's not that it's going to become the primary antenna hardware. It looks like it's going to be supplemental, you know, so it's going to be a combination. They're going to continue to utilize the top, the sides, you know, the rails of where they put the antennas, but they're also going to be putting it probably strategically near the top of the display, right? Like near the corners on the top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that would make sense. I think if they can show that it improves uh, signal resilience by 30%, 50%, then I think it's something that's tangible. They can measure that, and it's a metric. Then I think it justifies the cost, right? It's going to cost more money to install these, you know, and put them into the bill of materials. But, you know, millimeter waves, it's a very touchy signal, right? It's not very resilient. So... We know that millimeter wave is the ultimate capacity layer, all right? This would just further enhance it, I think, a little bit. The firm wants to, I don't know, increase the number of antennas, essentially, in this case, on devices. So whatever we're seeing now, this would add more antennas to the device. Traditionally, antennas have always been on the sides of devices, kind of like on the rails. This would kind of give it some additional surface area, kind of like what you were saying, and also, I think the important part of this is you're probably not blocking your display, which in the case, if you put your hands too high while holding a phone and you've got millimeter wave antennas on the sides where your hands are, we know how fickle the millimeter wave signal is. That makes it more challenging. So kind of the placement actually makes some sense in a way. I think it's just going to be, well, they have to do a proof of concept with this. So their goal would be to improve the signal maybe hold the connection a little bit better. This will probably improve the speeds. So in, instead of getting like one gigabit per second on a connection, now you might get two gigs per second, right? Nice wide channels, just because the signal would get better. And I think there's definitely some logistics concerns here, you know, with the fact that it's going to be in or under the glass of a display. Um, I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make, but I'll tell you what, Moose, if it improved signal resilience on millimeter wave by 50%, I think some manufacturers are going to really start to look at it. It's definitely going to be interesting. I mean, Apple right now has the best antenna so far from the testing, right, that you've done uh, for millimeter wave, correct? What was it, Moose? Apple Yeah. has the best antenna so far 
for minimum yeah, wage? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, unless there's mm -hmm. unless there's Asian OEMs that we don't have access to here and we haven't tested. Right, exactly. So North American, we'll I think the iPhone's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely have to see this if they actually are going to do this. You know. My greater concern is what does this do to the cost of the phone? We already know that millimeter wave models from Verizon for certain devices dr like drove up the cost by like a hundred bucks. Uh, let's let's go for example at the S20. Only Verizon Wireless had a smaller regular S20 with millimeter wave uh, antennas in it. That S20 was a hundred dollars more than any S20 from any other carrier. Right, so additional millimeter wave antennas increases the bill of materials. Does that cost? You know, it's got to be justified. The performance has to show it. You know, um, I don't know. We'll see. But again, like I said, Moose, right? It's such an important capacity layer, especially right. as millimeter wave builds out. Maybe this doesn't happen for two or three years. You know, like we actually see devices with in-display, on-display, millimeter wave antennas. But, dude, it'd be big time. I think it would. All right. That was the first millimeter wave story. Uh, there's some other stuff, too. Um, well, actually, yeah, yeah, let's just, let's just close off the millimeter wave thing. This second right. part is actually about Qualcomm. Qualcomm is investing heavily into millimeter wave technology. Again, I've been telling people, it's not a me thing. I know the direction that 5G is going. Millimeter wave is going to be huge. All right. All right. So Qualcomm in is investing heavily into millimeter wave technology. We got 30 mobile carriers and vendors that have committed to Qualcomm on a future project. China Unicom, Deutsche Telekom, Telstra, AT&T, all the big names. You get what I'm saying? All of them. Worldwide. Qualcomm is the best thing going in millimeter wave, and now they've got these partnerships and this alliance investing in millimeter wave technology. I think T-Mobile is also in on this, which is interesting because they always try to downplay millimeter wave. So that's why I always tell you, and, and anybody... You know, just generally speaking, don't listen to what carriers say. Watch what they do. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyways. 100% the SMT line. <laughs> it is. I mean, I, I always try to drive that point home. Uh, Qualcomm has a head start. So Qualcomm's kind of like the... Oh, and big shout out to Davies Tech. Thank you for that super chat, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. The... Um, the company Qualcomm is kind of leading the way in millimeter wave technologies. Uh, really, you know, I, I can't say MediaTek is doing much in that. I don't know. I just know that not many phones here in North America utilize MediaTek. So that's another thing to consider as to why Qualcomm is so far ahead of any competition. I just, I think this is a reminder that millimeter wave is inevitable. A lot of people, again, very conservative about it. They, they don't see it as being very practical. I beg to differ. The only thing holding back millimeter wave right now is the current lack of build. It's going to take time for all those antennas to get put up. And that'll change with time. So, hey, man. What do you think, Moose? Qualcomm went in the day. Got mm -hmm. AT&T involved, right? I love it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's all about 6G, man. I was reading an article that the... South Korea FCC is going to invest 160 some million dollars this year ongoing every year until 6G is developed. I was like, "What?" I couldn't believe it. Yeah, the investment, you know, if you do 5G properly, you're going to be set up for 6G properly. You know what I'm saying, Moose? You know, um mm -hmm. because densification mm -hmm. Lots of sites, lots of small cells, lots of millimeter wave. There's a reason why I think Verizon is so aggressive on that. There's a reason why AT&T has its pace in building out millimeter wave. And it's one of the reasons why I'm concerned about the T-Mobile network, actually. The lack of millimeter wave concerns me. The lack of small cells concerns me. Uh, the lack of the lack of cell concerns. sites, period. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying is all that adds up to concern. Yes. I know what... The end game to a successful 5G network is going to be a dense network. 